Should you buy the Anycubic Photon S in 2022? Is it a good printer? How has it aged in this rapidly evolving resin 3D printing marketplace? You're watching Once in a Six Side, and this is the Anycubic Photon S. So the Photon S first arrived to market in 2019, and this was a printer that started to land in the hands of various YouTubers in the miniature hobby space. And we began to see a number of videos tackling the topic of 3D printing for tabletop wargaming featuring this printer. There was of course the predecessor, the original Photon, and the competitor, the Mars, but the S is the one I remember really kicking things into gear. The S features a small but still quite capable build volume of 115 by 65 by 165 millimeters, a non-mono 5.2 inch 2K LCD, an injection molded plastic housing with a flippy up door and UV blocking windows, a dual linear rail for stable Z axis motion. Wait, are these linear rails? The website says they are, but they don't really look like linear rails, but whatever, they do the job. And a simple but effective leveling system that uses just one bolt. There's a USB port and power switch on the side, and a 2.8 inch color touchscreen on the front. Ultimately, it's a very simple but good design, but is a 2K printer even worth considering in 2022, especially a non-mono LCD at that? I've printed a lot of minis on my Photon S, like an insane amount. Every model you see on screen throughout this video has been printed on this printer. And since I first unboxed my Photon S, it's practically been running around the clock. I've replaced the LCD and FEP multiple times. The fan in the bottom's even burned out a couple of times. And so I've since upgraded it with a larger and more reliable fan. But other than that, I can confidently say it's been an absolute unit and a workhorse for my miniature hobby. The level of detail you get with a resin printer, even at 2K resolution, is in my opinion more than good enough for tabletop games. However, hardcore display and competition painters may want to consider a 4, 6, or even 8K printer. The Photon S just isn't going to satisfy you if the highest possible quality is at the top of your priorities. Let's get one of the biggest benefits to the Photon S out of the way first, the low cost of replacement LCDs. It's probably the worst thing about resin printers that the LCDs just can't stand up to the abuse from the UV light for a very long time and will always fail eventually. They are consumable items essentially, but the good news is if you buy a printer like the Photon S that only uses a 2K non-mono LCD, then you can get replacements sometimes for as low as 30 bucks compared to say a replacement 4K mono LCD where you could easily be paying two, even three times as much for it. The downside for the non-mono screen is the extra long print times. Now I quickly learned a good deal of patience with this printer and got comfortable pretty quickly with just putting the printer out of my mind while it did its thing. However, since getting a mono LCD printer myself just this year, I've really come to appreciate just how convenient the faster print times can be. Having said that, I was more than satisfied with my Photon S for the full two years before I felt the need to upgrade, and even then, my primary motivation was for a larger build volume. Speaking of which, the S may have a small build volume, but it's still very capable of printing large models. Just expect that not all pre-supported files out there right now will fit, and you may need to get comfortable with chopping up 
and re-supporting models to get them made on this printer. All right, let's try and summarize the pros and cons for this printer. Reasons that I like it include the super cheap replacement parts. It's not too difficult to service either, replacing the LCD and FEP, although it can be a bit tricky feeding that LCD ribbon cable through. The stepper motors are quiet. The filters inside actually seem to work pretty well. This printer doesn't blast me with that resin smell when I open it up at the end of a print like my Mono X does. And I think it produces a perfectly good level of detail for gaming pieces. As for the cons, the factory fan was loud as hell. There's no max fill line on the vat, but an easy workaround for that is to top up at the very beginning of a print when the resin is at its maximum displacement. So not a big deal. When it comes to pouring out the vat, I've found it doesn't really work all that well, despite the little channel in the corner that's meant to help with that. So it's always a bit messy to clean up this thing if you do have to empty it out. The double-sided tape used to hold on the LCD from factory was awful. I don't know what kind of tape it was, but it was so difficult to remove. But after removing it and using this stuff, uh, I haven't had any issues since. There's the really long print times, and it's easy to knock the bed out of level when removing prints if you're not careful. It doesn't produce the highest detail, but this isn't necessarily a con, as I still think the detail's really, really good. And finally, the small build volume. Many people aren't going to want to have to chop up and resupport files. They'd much prefer to just be able to buy a model and just have it fit with their printer. So a small build volume may be a limitation for some. So should you buy Photon S in 2022? Well, that depends. For someone brand new to 3D printing, I think it maybe makes more sense to spend a little bit more and buy a brand new machine with a warranty. But if you're just looking to add another printer to your collection and you can find one for a good deal used, say for a hundred bucks or less, then I think this printer isn't too bad at all. But if you care about having the sharpest possible detail, faster print times, or a larger build volume, I would pass on a Photon S and look elsewhere. 2K if you're on a budget and not bothered by a slightly softer detail, and 4K or higher if crispy details are important to you. There's not much more to say really. It's a well-built and reliable printer that's relatively easy user serviceable. However, it is showing its age with its non-mono LCD. But like I said, that can be a benefit if you prefer cheaper replacements over faster print times. That'll do it for this one. Hope you found this useful. If you want to help support the channel, head on over to my Colts 3D store where I sell Terrain STLs. Every purchase on there is super appreciated and I'm grateful to anyone who does that. And I hope you enjoy the models. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.